And then I said, women, I'm gay. Oh, I'm sorry, audience. I was a little busy. That was your opening? Wow. That wow. Was your okay. No, that, he just okay. fucking stole that from Spencer. <laughs> I know. When I'm in the call. You know what? Matthew, start the opening. Please Hello, start. everyone. Uh, my name is Matt, a.k.a. Legion Rex, and I am your host for this lovely podcast of the gap uh with me i have my co-host shane aka the bearded one how you doing today shane i'm here ready to talk about tits ass and a lot of shonen spirit same yes. uh with me we also have our lovely uh guest who stole my opening josh how you doing today josh it's your favorite asshole who steals opening josh i'm doing pretty good <laughs> yes uh, yes yes uh you are an asshole congratulations i'm very uh, excited <laughs> I'm very excited to talk about uh, Tits, the anime. Tits. Oh, there's also butts, too. There's also butts. Um, excuse oh, me. Butts. Tits, excuse me. Tits and ass, the anime. Um, excuse me. Wet tits, the anime. Come on. Oh, yeah, why? Get your facts straight. With, and also with us, we have our other guest, Spencer. How are you doing today, Spencer? I want to be a prize queen <laughs> and make lots of money and then be a pro Kajo player. Let's go. I don't Same. think Spencer has the uh, sex appeal to be a Kajo player. Spencer, Spencer is secretly yeah. wants to be a Kajo player. Dude, I would be a Kajo well, player. Well, okay, That's Spencer, no if you want to be a Kajo player, go to Portugal, because they're actually doing Kajo in Portugal. If, I Kajo, know. if a guy did Kajo, because they don't have boobs, what would replace the boobs? The nuts? No, you got you got to get a really fat dude so he can swing his <laughs> moves. No, okay. That's, that's okay. called sumo wrestling. Wait, no, <laughs> listen. I actually talked about this with Jen and Michaela yesterday. Keijo would not work as a co-ed sport because the women could just use their butts to hit you in the dick and then you'd fall and then you'd be done. Yeah, like, that's true. Wow. No or you could do a male you could do a male version of Keijo where everyone's got a huge penis and they just swing <laughs> exactly. that shit. Just around. Like, massive like, sh- we're talking oh like five to six foot penis. Like it's gotta no, be no, no, at least it, six it. inches. Instead of instead of boxing gloves, you have boxing boots. Okay, I think we need to start the show now. Oh uh, yeah, we do need to start. We actually have a lot to talk about <laughs> in this of the gap because uh, a new season of anime officially got started, so we're gonna be talking about that. Uh, there was anime expo uh, mm. between uh, Vitidis and the last recording, so we're gonna be talking about that. Um, and we also got, as of course, we got our featured anime of the week, which if you probably uh, you we don't even need to hide it. It's Keijo. We'll be talking about it uh, as well, along with other uh, uh, whatever else comes to mind, because who knows what the heck fuck happens on this podcast half the time anyways. Honestly, so, I'm not even here right now. I, I, I know it is here, in fact. We're, we're using the power of, uh, we're using the power of, uh, of, uh, cans and strain to talk to each other. We're using the and, power yeah. of mm-hmm. love to communicate through our souls. It's true. I'm, I'm actually, Amazon, dude. I'm actually from the future, and I just want to let everybody know that uh, you need to bet on the Milwaukee Brewers. Okay, they're going to win the World Series this year. Oh, I think I thought you were going to make a sweet uh, ad reference. Damn! Damn. Uh, I'm using right. the power of Samson. What the fuck are you guys talking about? All right, let's get started here. Yeah, all right, please. so we have. All right, so another season of anime has officially started up. Uh, there's a and there's a surprise amount of shows to talk about. Mm-hmm. Uh, we. There is a large port because uh, I remember originally I said at the beginning of the season that I think like oh this season's kind of dead. Yeah, what do you gotta say now, but- Matt? Yeah, uh, uh, I I I am a very humble host. So I will humbly admit that I was wrong, and this is this is oh, so far at least, so far at least this could change, but it is a pretty good season of anime. I wouldn't say as good as last season. But it's definitely worth ch- talking about. So uh, we're going to start with uh, Spencer here. Spencer, mm-hmm. any shows in particular from the from the uh, from the current from the season of anime that have int- have uh, intrigued you? Like, what shows in particular you want to talk about? I'll talk about two because it's uh it's two that I'm, re- I'm really into. First one I'm going to talk about is uh, Cells at Work. Let's all talk about this one because I want. Like, I, yeah. I don't want to talk about this one. Open too, discussion. So. Sells at work. I'll start. I haven't watched it yet. 
Okay, well then, I'll, I'll start with as it were. I have two words to, to, to describe this, and it's adorable biology. Um, oh, I was going to say Osmosis Jones, but you know. Osmosis, Osmosis Jones. Jones, the anime. It reminded me of Osmosis Jones, but if it wasn't bad, and that is... <laughs> And that is a very... Oh, uh, Matt throwing the shade right off the bat. Osmosis Jones is not good. So, like, I don't know. Wasn't Will Smith in that movie? Wasn't he Osmosis Jones? Wasn't even, it was like one of the Waynes, I think. Oh, okay. Uh, Cells at Work, the first episode, and uh, I haven't seen all of the second episode, but is this rare anime where it's a very simple concept you know, what if the cells in your body were people? And however, it takes it in a way that's both scientifically like accurate and actually surprisingly interesting. Um, but also keeps it in an anime style. Like it, it, it's almost at this point kind of like a monster of the week type anime. I but assume it's going like, to be a monster of the week. It's an rest. injury. Apparently, the there week. is an overarching big bad at some point in the manga, so I don't know. Yeah, so like, it's going to be Monster of the Week. I expected that. There's an overarching big bad, but yeah. like. You mean but cancer? All cancer? Of, I think <laughs> that's. All, not going to. No, you <laughs> joke, but I think that's actually what it is. I have <laughs> cancer is straight up the big bad. I feel, I, that's Make most sense. likely what it'll be for real. Make sense. Just but the no. final boss is cancer. All it's, of the. All of the um, uh, characters are incredibly well done. So, already, favorite characters, go. Uh, red, red blood cell. cell. White blood cell. He's Spencer, good. I, I was about to I say. Have... I, I... I already also, know yours. We don't need to talk about Josh. Um, I haven't. Spencer, I just said I haven't watched it, dumbass. Hey, dipshit. I already know which one you're going to fucking pick. What, red blood cell? Platelets. I just said red blood cell. The platelets are fucking cute, though. I love they are them. Adorable. Don't lose the. Remember, kids, don't lose the platelets. Don't lose the lolly. They, they are children. Actual, they, are they are actual, actual children. Children. So do the not. Police are watching. We we have connections with the police. Unlike <laughs> lollies, where they're like thousand year old dragons, do not lose the platelets. They are actual children. They are but no. legit minors. <laughs> I will. I will. Give the floor to everybody else that wants to talk about sales at work. Uh, Shane, uh, what um, do you think of sales at work? This show's pretty fucking great. Like, going into it, watching the PV, just researching shows to watch this season, I was like, this looks fucking stupid, but also fucking incredible. You I'm know, like, if I this is like, if this is like a fucking comedy action series where it's just a couple of badass cells fighting bacteria, I'm all for it. And according to my sister, who is a biology major, it's, like, extremely close to being 100% accurate in terms of actual human biology. So it's got that going the, for it. Who wants to bet that the manga, the guy who wrote the manga for this is it's probably, like, a, a biologist? Biology. It's, like, a biologist, yeah. but, like, he fucking, like, is also, like, a massive weeb. Oh, probably. So, like, he, so he's like, you know what? I'm going to write a manga that teaches people about proper biology. Using cute-ass girls. Cute-ass so, girls. You know and while also being a surprisingly badass battle shonen at the same time. Mm -hmm. Fucking, you know this show has some say. of the best action scenes of the season, and, and I, mean, I don't know how. <laughs> you, give it, you give it to David Production, because they always bring their fucking A-game. Yeah, they do. This this an so you could say that this anime is basically JoJo, but if it was Inside Out, that's basically what. Early this is. spoilers for JoJo Part Nine. Here it is. <laughs> yeah, right here. They they have skipped part. They have skipped. Yeah, you know Part Five. That was a meme. They fucking when they announced Part Five, that was a joke. This is no. Nope, they're like, you know what? This is the next part in the manga and the anime. Fuck the last four parts. We're going straight to nine. JoJo is going to be inside a human. <laughs> fighting okay. bacteria with his super stand red blood cells. So, the 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 uh, mangaka Akane Shizu, uh, this is the only thing he's done. Yeah, and he's probably a biologist. Probably <laughs> like that, that, that is literally what I'm guessing. But uh, I am I am a I am really liking this show. It's just it's the it's so damn charming. Like yeah, I, it's so damn charming. It's 
also fucking funny. It's mm-hmm. really, really funny. It's, it's really funny. Really funny. It's got great character designs, great like presentation in general. The animation's really solid. Too. And it's fucking. It's a uh, fucking. My only concern about it is that if it is Monsters of the Week, I don't want it to get repetitive. Uh, and so far, it it does not feel that way. From after only like a couple of episodes. Yeah. From how it feels, it seems like they're going to be tackling a different bodily issue every episode. And if they keep on that course, then I don't think we have anything to worry about. I kind of, I, I, I fucking, I can't wait for them to tackle AIDS. <laughs> I can't oh wait for them God. to tackle the subject that is STDs. I can't wait for them to tackle. They might. No, no. I can't wait for them to tackle the multiple sclerosis. Multiple. I can't sclerosis. wait for them to tackle death. Like the Tackled like, like the, the human the, the human just dies. dies. Fucking everyone dying. just dies, and it's like the human the just dies, and they're like, "Well, we can't world. we can't survive anymore. What do we do?" <laughs> oh, you know what? I actually do have something to say. What? I've been very impressed that every season we've been getting a very very high quality slice of life comedy anime. Like, I wouldn't and, say that I wouldn't say sells of work is slice of life, so I'm not well, gonna still. Yeah. I mean but there has been a high this this has been a good year for comedy. I will give you that. This mm-hmm. has been a big yeah. comedy. For the winter we had Eurocamp. We and had Tommy Bowls for spring. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure we'll get something great this season. For summer. Summer. I, then, I haven't seen any like big slice of light. Like the big comedic show for me is this season is sells of work. In fall, I'm oh, pretty yeah. sure we're getting and, the second. Uh, and the ironically transition, the second show Spencer wants to talk about. Yes, is uh, fuck, I forgot the name. Chio <laughs> School Walk. Wow. I have, I, oh, Chio School Road. I have okay. I Chio haven't School seen, Road. I haven't seen this yet, but I yeah, me neither. Okay, Chio School Road. Okay. This is for Matt. We talked about it on the podcast before, but this is just to give Matt context. You know that scene in Comic Girls that made me die? Is that this entire well, show? The, that was the entire show was, for me. The entire I episode, I was dying laughing. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. You know when something is a massive joke, but it's played completely straight? Yeah. Oh, yeah, the yeah. best, the best kind. That's Chio School Road. Yeah, a fucking. It's, so it's basically the entire it's, it's, show it's, yeah. revolves around Chio going, "Shit, I'm always late for school. I know. I'll take a shortcut. Okay. I'm so gonna become a ninja because I because I I woke up late because I was playing video games all night in my room." And I'm going to be late for school, so I'm going to transform into a ninja, scale a telephone pole, hop over a construction barrier, and then run on rooftops to school. Seems about right. So it's basically like taking a very simple premise, but doing literally everything with it. Yes. It is taking the idea of being late (laughs) and putting it as an insane comedy. Who has been late to school and decided, hey, you know what? I'm going to be a ninja and get there faster. Well, hang on. I'm, hold on. Yes. I'm running late for school. Oh, whoops. What's that, Mr. Mexican Man? You want me to hop on your motorcycle? Okay, I can do that. Dude, <sighs> there, there's, there's, a scene in the first case, there's a scene in the first episode where this douchebag um, like businessman is laughing at a small child whose balloon is stuck in a, a uh, stuck in a tree. What a dick! What yeah, a what a dick! Ass. And and he needs to die. <laughs> and so what Chio does, what she figures out is not only so she takes a pebble, okay, and she attaches it to the string of the balloon so it floats down. However, in her mind, she can't be seen by anybody because. Then they'll be like, what's a schoolgirl doing on a rooftop? So she attaches the pebble to the balloon so it, it'll float down to the child. And then I think she throws a briefcase at the businessman and hits him in the head. And it's fucking hilarious. Oh, is this the anime where she was on the rooftop and the guy opened the door and she had yes. to lay down flat? Yes, that's Geo School Road. 
Oh, it's God. ridiculous, and everybody should watch it. Like the I even mean to. The only reason I'm watching it is because when Matt did his uh, review roundup, he said that it's supposedly similar to Hinamatsuri, and anyone who's been watching the podcast over the spring season knows I fucking loved Hinamatsuri. It's Hinamatsuri, it's Hinamatsuri if it had more surreal esque humor in the vein of fucking Pop Team. Uh, yeah, okay, it sounds like it's made for me. And it's, it's uh, like... it. I've seen clips from it and it's fucking funny. So I I'm really excited to watch it. All right, Josh, is there any shows in particular that you don't want to that you want to talk yeah. about? There's really just one cuz I'm only watching one this season. Is it and, the one we were talking um, about before we started recording? No, it's uh, how not to self- summon a devil or a demon lord. Oh, oh yeah. Oh yeah, you watch now and how is it? Yeah. It's good. It's actually better than people thought. All right, all right, that's good. good. You know what? It's it's very etchy based, but it's got a lot of good comedy scenes. I think one of my favorite scenes was the uh, second episode. The guy wakes up in bed with the two girls beside him, and then his hands start moving towards the boobs, and he's like, "No, left hand! What are you doing? Stop this! I can't do this!" And he's like, "I've lost control of my hand. I can't do this! No, no, no!" And then that's how I'm like every time I see a boob. I just can't control and myself. You know what? It's a it's a good example of how to carry a extremely over, overpowered character because he is extremely overpowered in that show, but he acts like he's this high mighty guy, but inside he's fucking like screaming nervous. He's kind of like Cosma, where he's like, "Oh God, Cosmo. It, It's funny. I like it. It's a good. Uh, it's a good. I, play. I, I. It's a short and sweet. It's good. Mm. Shane. It's good. Is, it, is Shane, is there any show in particular that you, any shows in particular you want to talk about? Because I know that there's a couple, that a lot of ours overlap. So. Yeah. Um, I feel one like in particular, I know which one you want to talk yeah, about. Yeah, I know. Really want to um, talk about. I'm, I'm the one out of the group that's been the most keeping up on the season so far, just because I'm trying to keep up with it. Um,. A lot of the shows that I want to watch, I'm waiting for dubs. So things like uh, Chio School Road, Hanebado, Angels of Death. Those I'm waiting for the I'm dubs for on, those before I, I watch I'm them. waiting on a uh, Hanebado and Angels of Death dub. I'm probably gonna watch Chio School Road subbed. That's because I saw the fucking some of the shit in sub, and I was crying. So I'm like, yeah, it's gonna be yeah. funny. So. Um, but in terms of what I've actually watched, we talked about uh, Cells at Work. Fucking great. Um. Let's talk about Angle Moi a little bit because this is one that Matt's also seen. So this is the most acclaimed show of the season according to critical scores. So this is, and it's uh, it's pretty fucking great. It's actually. pretty good so far. <laughs> it's pretty good, and there has the has the the thing that I think is now for some people there's going to be like a divide when it comes to certain elements of the show, mainly in its visual mm-hmm. presentation. Mm-hmm. Uh, the looks like this kind of like dirty aesthetic. Yeah, it looks and like so, it's got this filter on it that makes it look like it's on like an ancient ninja scroll kind of. It's got like the paper. It looks like an old seventies fucking Ooh. samurai drama. Um, not a bad thing, of course. Uh, but it definitely is going to divide people because unlike it's not like megaloboxes where no. it's scaled down. So it's like, but uh. So there's like, but it, at the same time, like it's still, it, but it's still like, it's like seamless. In this, it kind of looks like the screen is like your screen has like fucking yeah, dirt it, on it. Yeah, it just kind of looks like your monitor has like fucking dirt on it. <laughs> and it's, and it's like, it's, uh, it's uh, a uh. little, it's a little distracting to be honest, but it's nothing that really gets in the way of yeah, the it's, experience. Yeah, because the stuff in this show that's good is really, really good. Mm-hmm. Uh, great, the, uh, great protagonist. I love... Oh, fucking, I love fucking Kuchi. He's, Kuchi, he's a fucking badass. He's fucking awesome, and he, he reminds me of a lot of Sugimoto from last season. He reminds me of a less over-the-top Sugimoto. Sugimoto, the Sugimoto just yelled everything, mm-hmm. so, like, that's... Dude, uh, it, it's... Uh, I'm so happy. Mm-hmm. You're so happy about what? Go on. Okay, so there's one thing that I love uh, more than anything in anime, and it's like it's it's like interesting story, good characterization, and then it's like visuals. 
because like I feel like a lot of anime that is kind of pumped out has a very samey look to it. Yeah, yeah. It's and easy. It makes yeah, money. It's, it's cost effective. It's easy. But when animators try to do something different, so like Megalobox, where they had to tone up and tone down everything to give it that kind of '90s VHS style aesthetic. Yeah. When they put the extra effort in to make a unique looking art style and animation, mm-hmm. um, it it means a lot to me, the consumer, because it shows that they don't want to do the same old shtick. They want their anime either authentic or unique in the anime community and world. So no, so like seeing some screenshots from the. Uh, small videos for Anglo Moise, I really enjoy the, the very gritty, almost screen tearing aesthetic that they yeah. went with. I feel like they didn't even need to do it though. Because, no, they like, really didn't. No, because like it one, I, uh, I again I appreciate it. It looks cool. It looks pretty it like it looks pretty cool. But at the same time the anime also has a like the, the character designs are like very like unique as fuck. Yeah. Like I can't this is a unique looking show regardless. Also yeah. the fight scene. Oh god, the fucking good. The fucking and fight choreography is like A plus top tier. Mm-hmm. Like that that scene at the end of the first episode where the the Mongols start invading the island and Kuchi just goes fucking ham on them, just slicing dudes up left and right. I'm like, oh. And that's all I have uh, to say. And it's uh. Yeah, like that was really good. Uh, is that all you have to? Is there anything else you want to talk about? Or well, yeah, um, I'm saving the one you know I want to talk about for the end because yeah. Oh yeah. Because, um, oh god, yeah. A couple things. Um, Grand Blue, which has been very divisive so far. Uh, I personally very much enjoyed. Definitely not my favorite of the season, but what it does good it does really fucking good like the humor in the show fucking top notch like it, it it all plays on reactions to get the punchlines off so it's like my one of my favorite parts of the first episode it's like the main character uh iori uh, join he's forced to join this diving club who's which is just a fucking frat house it's just full of goddamn idiots who are just drunk and they're like, come drink with us, get fucking hammer, and he's like, fine, whatever, I don't have a choice. And then he wakes up in front of his school, fucking butt-ass naked, and it's like, what the fuck happened last night? And he's like, well, now you're not late to school, so there you go. And then no, there's, this, this... there's this running joke where he's like, fuck, I need some water, just give me some water, and they keep giving him this glass of water, and he's like, thanks. He takes a sip, and he's like, wait a fucking second. And then he lights it on fire, and he's like, what kind of fucking water lights on fire? And they're like, it's, it's, combust- vodka. it's combustible water. <laughs> there you go. I sold Spencer on the show in just that one fucking scene. This show, no, this show, the manga this is based on, by the way, is ranked number seven on Mal. So, like, appar- apparently, like, this thing is like one of the most acclaimed manga of the past couple I'm, of years. I'm just fucking combustible. It's combustible. Water. I think that's fucking funny. Dude. No, it's fu- it's, it's fucking, fucking hilarious, dude. You know what? That that reminds me of like early Angel Beats when like the comedy was on point and it was kind of it wasn't jokes that it was put based off of it was based off of like just stupid shit happening and oh god fucking combustible yeah. water no it's it's fucking hilarious dude and oh, it, and the animation <laughs> play the animation plays into all of it because it's got some of the best reaction shots I've seen in an anime in a long time like when they get when they get fucking like really mad like this isn't fucking water they look like fucking titans and I'm not even fucking joking oh. about that it's fuck it's fucking great 
And I'm so Matt said he was gonna watch it before we did the podcast, but he didn't, which I'm very I'm, disappointed I'm, about. I, I, I ended yeah. up f- watching other things. I'm definitely watching it. I'm definitely gonna watch it after this podcast. Oh, after yeah. hearing the combustible water shit. Oh, no, that's I am <laughs> Best okay. Fucking thing. Like if that shit, if that is man. legit one of the funniest fucking phrases I've heard in a while. Combustible so, water. Okay. It's combustible. No, just the way Shane said it though is what yeah, made like, me laugh. It's, is this it's not water? What kind of water lights on fire? It's combustible water. What? <laughs> oh god. New okay. combustible water from Acme. Uh, right. Fucking okay. Uh, moving on because we're gonna die. Holy yeah, we're moving shit. on. Um, I only got a few more things to talk about for the big one. Happy Sugar Life, which I watched. I was gonna watch this because it's only one episode out, but one, I, I got one of busy, the so. best premieres of the season because I think we all, I think those of Master us who Girl was a big disappointment last season, so yeah. I, so I was hoping that this could like reclaim it. Yeah, so I'm not gonna really spoil the premise for anyone who doesn't know about this, but let's just say all I'm gonna say is this is a bait and switch. It's one of those fucking animes, and it's also a horror show, so that's. There you go. <laughs> but what I want to say without really spoiling anything, because the way the way it shifts tones is, like, fucking expertly done. Like, it hits you out of nowhere, and it's like, whoa, okay, it makes you take notice for everything that happened before and after. And I think it really has a great balance between really, like, psychological horror, keyword, psychological and, and this, like, re- this really cutesy bubblegum aesthetic. I think it, re- it it blends the two styles really well. Yeah, uh, I'm I'm excited to watch it because I've heard it's fucked. Mm-hmm. Oh, you don't even know. Uh, so, uh, is there any other? Sh- I know there's two shows in particular. There's two shows that we need to talk about. Um, first off, Planet with Matt. Matt. <laughs> yeah, I um. Okay, so. I was the one who got this show to Shane's attention. Mm-hmm. Because before the season started, I uh, like I didn't have it on my radar either. But then I read up the staff list for this thing, and I learned that it is the anime brainchild of uh, Satoshi uh, Mishikami, who is a really popular and famous mangaka in Japan, who's well known, oh. who's who for the longest, who has but is has been one of those authors who's like famously like not had any adaptations of it. and finally though he has an original series out called planet with and the best way i can describe this thing is that it's like flcl meets like meets like fucking uh uh fucking like gurren logan meets fucking uh meets tiger and bunny like it's such a weird combo and it's but it really works yeah and em- emphasis on the weird because this it's show is really weird. fucking oddball <laughs> it's out there and but one of the things i love about it is uh one of the things i really love about it is how it's playing with like the standard tropes you'd normally find in an anime like this mm-hmm. the main care essentially at the start our main character is basically like what you think a natural mecha villain is he has like a fucking like mask on. He's like like asking to like he's trying to steal the main character like these like these superheroes' powers uh, for some unknown reason, unknown goal. Um, he's got he's this. Like, he's got this like unknown backstory where he he's seeking he revenge, amnesia. but he doesn't know why. Yeah, but he's but the big thing is that he's the main character and he's kind of being roped into doing this. Yeah, by these and shady our, like, ass motherfuckers. And on our sh- and our main villains are not really villains like at all because none you hate none of them and they're no. all really likable. And but I think they seem to have but they have this hints that they may have done some shitty stuff in yeah. the past. And I, I the my favorite part about the show so far is how the battles go about. Because the whole thing is like, oh, there's aliens. We gotta send our superhuman uh, squad called Grand Paladin. We gotta send them out to fight the aliens. But it turns out the aliens use like mind games against them. So the entire fight 
is just them confronting something from their past and coming to terms with it. There's no actual fighting with the aliens. Now, the, 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 so when I say come to terms with it, I don't think that the, the one from the newest episode, I don't think she came to terms with it, like, at all. But, like, I think that's what That's what I got from Hideo's. With Miu's, yeah. it was definitely different. But it was still yeah. kind of in the same caliber. Yeah, and that me and I think that's a brilliant idea. Uh, the animation is really good, mm-hmm. especially on the CG. The CG the is a CG's lot better surprisingly than surprisingly good. It's not good. It's not amazing. Uh, but one thing that it it does really well is like when it when the when they move, you feel yeah. like they're fucking moving. Yeah, when they're and in it's, motion, it's really well conveyed. It's really well conveyed, and it yeah, it's really well done. And there's all here's the thing: there's a lot of CG in this show. Yeah, so because the all of the all of the mechs it, are CG. So. Yeah, all the mechs are CG, and it looks and it, it looks surprisingly really good. But basically, so. all we gotta say about this is, if you liked how weird Fully Cooley was, and you liked how fucking rad Gurren Lagan was, here you go. Go nuts. Yeah, I, yeah, the difference is that I think this is going to get dark really fast. Yes, so I, I have is... the same feeling. It's got this really dark undertone to it where anything could just snap at any moment. Yeah, yeah. And then there's also one show. And then there's one more show we want to talk about. Mm-hmm. And, and um, this is probably my favorite premiere of the season. This is early on. My favorite premiere of the season is probably mm-hmm. going to be my anime of the season. Yeah, like, early on set for anime of the season. Calling it right now. Uh, it's ban- and that's banana fish. Banana fish. <laughs> banana fish. Um, this blew me the fuck away mm. in one episode, and then just hasn't like two episodes in. It's already like I'm mm. like this is leagues better than most anime I've ever seen in my life. Cause I ha- one, it's really unique. I haven't seen something like this. Yeah, this is definitely a very unique show. Uh. But second, it's like this show is very cinematic. It's a very cinematic show. Uh, it flows like, like we mentioned last week that Attack on Titan kind of like flowed like a big like twenty five episode movie. Mm-hmm. This is gonna this is gonna be twenty four episodes. I confirmed it's double core. Yep, and cool. it's and if it's anything like ta- like the first two episodes, this is gonna flow so well. I'll I'll even say this right now. I watched episode three last night, and uh, it's looking fucking good in that regard. Apparent, apparently, they go full gay. Oh, they're so it's gay, dude. It's so gay. <laughs> there's like trigger warning though. There's also the bad kind of gay. So just oh, putting yeah, that is, out there. Yeah. There's some stuff in. If you're like easily sensitive, Banana Fish might not be a it, show to yeah, watch. It might. You might have to it, skip it. Honestly. Yeah, because this, because they are doing He's sensitive. Are you talking about every single person in our generation? No, we're talking mm-hmm. about child, like on screen child rape. So, like, it's one of those things where if you're going to be very, like, that, it, like, this is stuff that's legitimately upsetting. So, like, it's, please be careful watching. However, in episode three, they get to the good kind of gay, and I kind of squealed. The, the, oh, the good kind of gay. There nice. is tongue and everything. Okay. All right. Uh, We're moving all right. on. <laughs> there will be. I don't want any more of the gay. The gay. Uh, you know, Spencer. This... I felt like you would have been a little more. Uh, yeah, reassuring a little bit more there. reassuring there. But okay. You know, but, as uh, a newly uh, as a, as a as a recently come out gay person Spencer hey, hey, I'm part gay I'm not still gay, gay though it's still it, it's still gay it's, it's, it's like there's still the gay so I will say though that I do really uh because I actually I've been reading some of the manga the original manga uh-huh. and uh I haven't watched the anime yet I'll probably do that after episode for yeah. work um I enjoy that the LGBTQ community is mm-hmm. finally getting some good representation mm-hmm. in Japan because for years upon years, uh, I, I guess now I can say we instead of you guys. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's, that's the weirdest part is now I can say we when I talk about this stuff. Uh, yeah, welcome to the club, boy. Yeah. Welcome. It's we've, fun. Been sh- we've been shafted for... Yeah. In anime, in which the gay character is typecast, 
uh, they don't really have a quote unquote buy type cast. It's usually like the the litigious type, yeah. you know. When it comes like, to actual gay representation, we've been stuck with fucking like stuff like Free, which is gay but also it's not gay. also heavily queer bait. So yeah, it's super queer baity. The closest thing we've come to like actual fucking mainstream gay is Yuri on Ice, and even which, then that copped out at the end. So, which like, hello, I have something to say. That copped out at the end too. So, Literally, like, all I have to say about Banana Fish in that regard is if you thought that Mappa didn't go far enough with the gay and yuri mm. they're doing it here <gasps> so they're doing it here and also they kill a kid so like there's that yeah, too yeah they, they got something against kid. they got this show's got something against kids dude because, That's like, the kid, no and when he was, it wasn't like it wasn't a kid that i hated no either. it was I a kid i really liked and then he just dies and, and it was they, like they fuck him up <laughs> no so no um no, so no, uh, fucking, uh, and it wasn't like no, it was it was like no, like final, like words or anything. He just, just fucking just drops. Yep. And it's like, oh, oh, okay. Mm hmm. Um, but this show is great. If you haven't seen Banana Fish, fucking do it. it do is it. Like, so, it's so good. Um, and it's uh, easily probably my favorite show of the season. It's easy. It, if, it, if it keeps the quality that it has now anime of the season high contender for anime of the year also the op is a banner the op is fucking amazing <laughs> yeah the op is a banner uh, you know uh, what you know what has a a, a fucking sm a, that banging op what uh honestly though out of context uh, a lot of shows this season actually have good ops but uh, sells at work. That's a really, really good OP. Oh yeah, that was and, good. And and uh, when 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 we get to it, Keijo has a good OP. Keijo has a good OP. I think the new My Hero OP is fucking excellent. Um, yep, still not better than OP four. But what is better than OP four? That's true. OP five. That's true. Spencer. <laughs> Uh, but, uh, no, but, and I think with that, I think we're done our, uh, simulcast discussion. Yeah, I think we can move on to our yeah. news section there, Matthew. Yeah, Woo! and we got quite a bit of news. Uh, we're gonna start off with, uh, and the first piece of news we're gonna start off with is, um, is, uh, some, is, is, is a big one. It's a big one that mostly only I care about, but I want to bring it up because I feel like it deserves mentioning because because the implications of it are a lot bigger than the actual news it's is this the anime actual news we're talking about now this is a kind of it's anime news but it's like other stuff so live action anime stuff has had a lot a really rocky track record oh boy really rocky track record like uh it's getting better it's getting better but it's definitely something where we, there's still work to be done there's still work to be done uh, not ev not every anime adaptation can be uh, a live action anime film can be Tokyo Ghoul or Roni Kenshin. Not all of them can be that you know, as good as those ones. Uh, there's been a lot of shit, but you know they're gonna keep. The, the only way to improve is to just keep on trying, and they're gonna keep on trying because uh, with uh, and the big and the so one of the the first big piece of news that came out of Anime Expo was that um. The long rumored live action Gundam is actually happening. Oh, uh, <laughs> uh, really? Lo long rumored. Uh, Sunrise president and CEO y uh, Yasuo Miyokawa announced at Sunrise Anime Expo panel on Thursday that Sunrise is collaborating with Legendary Pictures, who worked, who did the, uh, who are best known for doing Pacific Rim, Godzilla, uh, and all that, all that stuff, the new Godzilla stuff, that stuff. They're going to work on, we're collaborating on a live action Gundam film. Uh, Co-production has begun, and Legendary and Sunrise are going to be uh, going to be working on it, which means that it is going to be an American Japanese co-production, um, which is going to be the it's going to be the first of its kind. Um, I was about to say, please tell me it's not Hollywood doing it. Uh, well, no, Hollywood is doing it, but like Japan is involved. If that makes any okay. Japan is involved, which means there's a high chance that it can. Remember, be it's good. Le Legendary is a Hollywood studio. They did; they've done the new Godzilla stuff. They did uh, dark, like the, the the Christopher Nolan Batman films. 
they've there's worked a good on a chance this could be good. They're very much a Hollywood studio. So like, but with and with Gundam, you need a Hollywood budget for it to work. So like, yeah. This so this sense. isn't going to piss to bed, hopefully. Uh, and uh, yeah, and also, gu- and also, Gundam works in an American setting because all the characters have American names. So for the most part, cool. yeah, for the most part, some of them have like, it's 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 meant to be global. So there's mo- there's characters from multiple movies. Yes. But, um, um, so the big deal and the big deal now there's been, a, they announced some more stuff on it too, after the actual announcement one, you can watch like the teaser promo on their website. Um, <coughs> it's there. And they also announced that it is not technically an adaptation of the OG series. Ooh. Um, okay. instead it's a live action sequel to Gundam unicorn. Um, is that it's, good? It's a basically the way Gundam works is that every new installment is technically a new gun is like basically a standalone thing. So you gotcha. so anyone who gets, watches a Gundam show just you can watch them like in any order and however you want basically. Mm-hmm. Basically, now, watch the ones that appeal to you most. This so basically, this is just going to be another Gundam installment. It's now, be correct completely me, new it, characters, completely new. It's going to be Universal Century, so the main setting. Okay, I'll but say. it's you see, but it is a it is a it, but it is it's it's set in a timeline that has not been explored in UC yet. So it's oh, going to be that's between, it's going to be set in between Unicorn and F ninety one, which is like twenty years of time that hasn't been explored yet. So Unicorn this, was that Golden Age or Silver Age? That was po- it's post uh, it's post Char's counterattack, so that's okay. Really good, yeah, idea. So post Amaro, um, but it's uh, this is it's happening. If anything, this is one anime adaptation I've been clamoring for because this is something that really really works. And if anyone has seen Ready Player One, which was also which Legendary also helped work and fund on, I believe. You can see that uh, they had the or uh, they had the OG Gundam in it, and it looked fucking amazing. So it can be done. This thing can be done. We just gotta, we just gotta hope. We just gotta hope that it's good. I think if anything has a, if the, if any live action adaptation has is going to work, it's this one. This one is going. I I'm I have high, I actually have. A lot of optimism for this one, more than I usually I do. I feel like it has a good chance for it, man. Yeah, and Sunrise is directly involved, which could be a bad thing because it's Sunrise. <clears throat> but, like, uh, Sunrise is never the most uh, trustworthy because they're very much known for uh, money. Money? They, they, they care a lot about uh, that. that Yo, but, give me uh, them fat stacks. But at the same time, you know what? I, 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 I prefer to remain optimistic. So let's uh, let's hope that this is good. Yeah, more news out of Anime Expo. There was a couple. There were two pieces of Netflix news. Anime oh, news. Netflix oh, anime. anime. Mainly uh, announcements. Um, the first one is that uh, the highly acclaimed uh, Agretzko is getting a season two. Mm-hmm. Cool. Uh, Netflix cool. announced during its Anime Expo panel on Thursday that Samuel and Fanworks uh, Retsuko anime will get a second season that will debut next year. Cool. Uh, the original season premiered on April twentieth, uh, four twenty. <laughs> of uh of this year it had 10 15 minute episodes um the director uh, director and writers were both returned which is good because that show lived and died on its writing um uh so who here has seen agresco outside of me i have seen a I single have. episode I did you been... like what you saw? I did and i will probably watch the rest at a undiscerned point in the future I have seen four episodes. They were good. I enjoyed myself watching them. It I'll made me it. feel like a terrible person who's going to die alone. Dude, that's me watching anything. <laughs> that's yeah, all I'm going to say about that. Yeah, no, yeah, that's yeah, all that's that. So yeah, but Agresco's getting a season two. But the other piece of news is that they announced a bunch of premiere dates for a lot of other stuff that came that they... Uh, that they have picked up and but haven't released yet. Go on. So they announced the premiere dates include the the second God the second Godzilla film, which is sec- which is Godzilla City uh, on the Edge of Battle, will premiere on July eighteenth, which means it already technically it's already out. It's already out. Kengen Ashura will premiere sometime next year. Uh, Dragon Pilot, which they picked up. 
uh, the new bone that new bone show will premiere on September twenty first of okay. this year, which I will watch that. I will probably but, watch of course, that. The big one is that they announced the official release date for the second season of Castlevania, mm-hmm. um, and that Ooh. will be October twenty sixth, just in time for Halloween. Yeah. So if you want to get your if you want to get your spook on, watch the Castlevania. I okay. Can I just say one thing about the Castlevania anime? Is that it had no right to be as good as it was. I mean, you could say that technically about any Netflix anime, I really. I can. However, specifically Castlevania, I felt had no right to be as genuinely good as it was. And obviously, you know, I watched it dubbed, mm-hmm. and I love what they've done with Trevor. Like, yeah, Castle. This new Castlevania series is excellent. Like, it's, it's, it's excellent. excellent. There's only I think they released four episodes. It was only it? four. They're releasing it basically it eight episodes. They announced that it has been it has been renewed for a third season as well. Cool. Um, which will also be eight episodes. So yeah. basically, eight episodes is the standard of length going forward. Mm-hmm. And. The first part, the, the first four was to see if people actually liked it. Yeah, people really liked it. <clears throat> um, so now they are. This is going to go for a little bit. So, what Castlevania is it taking place? Three. If we said three. Three. It's so Castlevania seven. three. It's Castlevania okay. three. It's, uh, it's before. Yeah. So yeah, first and it's also one there. of the best Castlevania games. If you are mm-hmm. me, mm-hmm. I King, love Dragon. You know, Castlevania four is obviously. Still. So I mean, Super Castlevania four is like a fucking masterpiece. Yeah, so, like, it's that. the best Castlevania. Or, actually, my favorite is Symphony of the Night. Symphony of the Night. So, yeah. Symphony of the Night. I prefer. I prefer Castlevania four. I mean, I it's, actually, it's just Castlevania four is excellent. So that's I prefer, prefer um, um, Ari of Sorrow and Symphony of the Night. But it's good. Watch it. Trust me. It's no word. Work. No word on uh, when Seven Deadly Sins is premiering, huh? Yeah. No word. So say coming out. Fuck if I know. Because <laughs> the second season is already done now, so yeah, second be... season is wrapped up, but no word on when that's coming to Netflix. So, uh, probably oh. I'm gonna guess. I'm gonna you know, honestly, I'm probably gonna guess sometime early 2019. That's my guess. Early 2019 is probably going to be my guess. You know, it's oh, like, honestly, it's one of the popular, most popular series. So they're probably that's probably get why they, when because they're, they're saving it, they're probably going to save it for like a week all its own. Then. Yeah, that's what they do when uh, stuff like House of Cards gets uh, comes out and like stuff like Orange the New Black and stuff that like when stuff like that comes out, they save a whole week for it and just promote the fuck out of it. All right, so there's that, and then in. in um, there was also, a, but the probably one of the biggest pieces, of, uh, one of the biggest pieces of news that come out of Anime Expo was that Trigger Studio Trigger was there, and they officially finally revealed the uh, the new anime Promare. Promare. Uh, Studio Trigger revealed more details for Promare, its upcoming original anime collaboration with X Flag. Um, during his panel at Anime Expo, the anime's protagonist is revealed to be named Gallo, who is in a new recruit in a oh. rescue team, apparently involving firefighters and stuff. Uh, the anime no, what? called Matoy Tech, named after the Matoy banners that Edo period firefighting units use, and will take place in North America. I am um, very happy to see that Trigger is starting to release more and more anime on a more um, like it, consistent basis. Yeah, um, Trigger confirmed that Sugeto Koyama is in charge of character design and mechanical. De- um, so if you want to know who Sugeto Koyama is, if if this thing up he is the guy best known he is best known for the mecha designs on stuff like eureka 7 and gurren lagan um gurren lagan he did uh stuff for gurren lagan uh, yeah, Gur- he also made the mech designs for uh darling in the franks and he's worked on key and he's worked as a key animator uh for and he worked on a key animator for, he's working on a key an- as a key animator for all the new ava ava Gallant. Holy um, shit. And he was also the designer for the uh, for the Tachikomas from Ghost in the Shell. No, I um, just I just looked at the uh, at the poster. Yeah. Uh, that's it's, a fucking trigger show. Yeah. Um uh, uh Trigger and X Flag revealed that they will there will be more information coming this fall, so there's no release date yet for this. Mm-hmm. Uh, probably it's probably next year. Next year. Uh, director Hiroyuki Ishi, uh, uh, Ishimashi, who is the kill a kill, Gurren Lagan, painting stocking guy, is directing this. And the script writer who also worked on Kill a Kill, Gurren Lagan and Panty Stocking is writing. Um, they are teaming again. 
Um, it, in terms of tone, it's going to be more similar to Gurren Lagann and Kill a Kill. So good, it's going to be a mix of comedy, comedy so, and drama. I mm-hmm. love it. Um, is, it only, uh, uh, is it only Studio Trigger? Only no, it's, it's this is trigger. a full Trigger production, yes. This is the full oh, Trigger. Okay. Full Trigger. This isn't um, Darling in the train wreck. This is isn't Darling in the Franks was A one. It's not, and it's not SS Gridman, which is a trigger. Which I'm is saying, another it's trigger. It's not A one. It's not A one being like fuck you guys. No, it's uh, it's all trigger. The one thing yeah, I do want to mention though about this is that the protagonist looks exactly like Kamina, and there's no difference. Like he's straight. oh, that's the one I saw. Okay, that's yeah, that's the, the, that's the one I posted in the Discord, and I was like, look at how pretty this boy is. No, he is he, a pretty he boy. Like he is a he's very a pretty boy. But Kamino was also a pretty boy. He and looks exactly, exactly like, like Kamino. He looks exactly yeah. like Kamino, dude. I would let Kamina super combining manly spirit with me. Apparently, they had to spend 15 minutes at fucking Anime Expo just telling people that it's not a prequel to Gurren Lagann. <laughs> <laughs> they, wow. like, they, were, like, they had to tell, like, like it's not Kamina, we swear. Kamina, is that Guys, you? Guys, he just looks a lot like Kamina. Don't worry like about Kamina. it. Apparently, you know from, the footage, from the little footage they showed, he acts like Kamina, too. Oh my god, you know yes, my wet dream has come thing, true. Trigger, Trigger has done so many different characters that it's bound to have something like that happen. You're bound to have a character overlap. But, yes, like, okay. this is I exact, can agree this is with Kamina, you to dude. A- I can agree to with you personality wise, but when your character looks exactly like one of your other characters, that's not coincidental crossover. That's a stylistic choice. Yeah, I don't know. Pome and uh, Pome looks great. I think it's about since it's about fire. It's probably about firefighting. <laughs> Uh, if that's it, about firefighting mechs. I'm going to uh, watch. I want to bet if this Fire is actually fighting Aaron Logan and Kill a Kill. What if they have to fight actual. What if they have to fight the actual fire? fire? The fire is like actual. Oh my God. Yeah, like, no, like they have to punch the shit out of it. I. You guys know what I'm into. I'd be all over that shit. <laughs> but uh, it's Trigger. It's going to be great. I know for damn sure. And I'm really. Really excited. Um, this hose is the hose that will pierce the heavens. For more, uh, more. Um, this is probably the last. This is the uh, like the. This is like the last uh, piece of news at uh, uh, at Anime Expo uh, because uh, like the, the because the well not technically but the next piece of news after this is not is like from other stuff. Uh, it's like from it's like a mix of stuff from outside of Anime Expo. Um, this, uh, so if you know, the new season of Attack on Titan premiered at Anime Expo, uh, yep. uh, and it, from recording this, it is going to be, it is going to, uh, premiere, it is going to officially premiere on the 22nd of, uh, it's going to, on the 22nd of this month, surprisingly late, but whatever, um, at least we're getting our fucking Attack on Titan season two, I know, season yeah. three. Um, but, uh, they announced, there's been, a uh, one big change between seasons, and that is, uh, for the first time in the anime's history, oh, Link nice. Horizon will not perform the opening for Attack on Titan. Which makes uh, me sad. The third season of Attack on Titan has full premiere at Anime Expo on Sunday and revealed that the new opening theme song is Red Swan by the band X Japan, featuring Hyde <laughs> from La Conciel. Link Horizon performed the previously opening theme song for the Attack on Titan anime, Third season of Attack of Time will premiere in Japan on July twenty second. Uh, on July twenty second, Funimation ha- 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 will will uh, simul dub it in August, and will also and will also and Crunchyroll will stream the simulcast of the show as it airs. So, uh, is anyone else like me disappointed that Link to Horizon is not back? Very, very disappointed. I mean, if, I the, mean, if the theme is good, I don't really care. They did not premiere it at Anime Expo. Uh, the episode was aired without an opening, so... The, 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 let me just check something real quick. Like, if the, if the song itself is good and the opening to go with it is good, then I really don't care who does it. But at the same Look time, man. Like, I'm just disappointed because Link's Horizon is a... Uh, Link to Horizon is basically a uh, is basically a staple of Attack on Titan. To me. And... I would argue that without uh, without Link to Horizon, the show would not have become as popular as it is now. 
because that opening really sold a lot of people on watching the show just because of how good it was. And like, and to me, and I feel like uh, unless because this is going to be a double cool show, it's going to be twenty four episode. If Link to Horizon is doing the second, I don't maybe that's probably what it is. But uh, I'm who just knows? Dis- I'm, who knows? Who knows? I'm just disappointed they're not coming back. Um, uh, the best thing, but that being said, having the main lead singer from Lock on Ciel as the, as fucking in it is fucking great. Cause Lock on Ciel is a fucking dope ass band. That um, stands for that, rainbow. That is the, uh, that is the very steady go guys. So, mm-hmm. uh, so if you are, uh, but it's not, it's not the entire band. It's just, uh. It's just this Lee Singer. Also, speaking of Attack on Titan, I don't know if we're covering this in the news, uh, the Toonami thing. Uh, we're not covering that because it's pretty much expected. So, like, it's, it, we all knew it was going to Toonami. Well, so. okay, Attack on Titan Season 3 is premiering on August 18th on Toonami. Simuldub's probably going to be shortly after that. So, yeah, just putting basically that out there. this. Yeah, so if you want. So, that's a good. So, you have to wait a bit for the dub. But, uh, whatever. Um, but yeah. But, and now we move on to our, the part, the biggest piece of news, the biggest pieces of news this week. Um, and it's all about Dragon Ball Super. It's all about Super. Um, this is going to be multiple parts. We're going to talk about, uh, we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about the, the biggest thing probably. And then we got a title, we got a poster, and we have... Basically, villain reveal. Toei announced more details on Monday for the tw- for the upcoming 20th Dragon Ball film, including the film's title and visual. They have confirmed that the official title is Dragon Ball Super Broly. Below the below visuals tagline reads "The Greatest Enemy Saiyan" and confirms the film will scheme in IMAX, MX4D, and 4DX in Japan as well as to regular screenings. Original manga creator Akira Toriyama provided a comment. Everyone, do you know who Broly is? He appeared only in past anime films and is a ridiculously strong Saiyan. I am told I only drew his design. At the time, I was mostly uninvolved with the anime, so I completely forgot the details. Even now, it seems Broly is still very popular, not just in Japan, but overseas as well. And because of that, the supervisor suggested, why don't we make the movie about Broly this time? At, the to- at that time, I was shown the film, and I felt that it would, immediately- it would become really interesting, depending on how it's arranged. So we still would be talking immediately about a clue into the Dragon Ball Super series. In order to not disappoint Broly fans, I was conscious of Joe Broly's past image, while also giving him new aspects, and I think he ended up as a fascinating Broly. Of course, the film won't just show amazing battles. It will also show what kind of fate Goku, Vegeta, and Broly will follow when they meet, how the Frieza army is connected, and the history of the Saiyans, and the content of the film is dramatic and has a huge scale. That greatest Saiyan Broly appears. Uh, there will be a lot of other content that will be included for the fans, so please look forward to it and wait a little longer is... They also announced that there will be pre-order bonuses for those who go see it in Japan. It will not be available for us, because fuck us, am I right? Um, and uh, they also showed that uh, there will be Goku and Vegeta in winter gear. Um, the, 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 the film will open in Japan on December 14th, and Funimation has announced oh, as well that the, that, the, that, the, that, the, that the English dub of the anime will premiere in theaters in January of 2019, just a month later. So, Shane. Yes, Matt. Um, I can, I can, are you okay? I think I am. <laughs> I think, um, okay, spoiler alert, I actually died last night. Yeah, after watching this goes the trailer. The third part of the trailer. A trailer was released for the film, and a, Oh my god. I actually, spoiler alert, I actually died after watching the trailer, and I'm here in spirit form, like, my body is in the ground currently, because I felt my heart stop watching that goddamn trailer. Because, like, that that was fucking incredible. That was, like, oh my god. Like, I was, I had high expectations, but god fucking damn... I was not expecting them to be blown out of the water that hard. Like that, like that movie. Oh. That, it looks incredible. It looks it, fucking phenomenal. It looks so good. And plus, bro, Hero and Vic Mignana as Broly again after all these years. 
is uh is very very nice like basically all i have to say about this is anyone who is doubting this fucking movie because oh they're bringing broly back it's a cop out they don't have any original ideas you can officially shut the fuck up now because uh because one, there is video there is video is evidence this is a prove. very different broly i uh, this is a like in you know here's the thing. in that trailer he had more personality alone than he ever has had yeah just the shot just the one shadowy shot of him taking a bite out of what i assume to be a slab of meat uh-huh. just like that's more personality than broly had in three fucking movies i'm guessing broly is going to be com- and broly they said is going to be completely revamped so. yep it, this is this is toriyama's vision of broly because those who don't know broly has always been considered a non-canon character because he wasn't created by Toriyama, and he only ever showed up in the movies, which were considered non-canon. So this is, like, official canon Toriyama Broly. Yeah. And after watching that trailer, all the doubts I had in my mind are just completely gone, and yeah. I can't wait for January to come. Like, it can't it can't get here Vegeta soon versus enough, Broly. Frieza versus Broly. Goku versus Broly. Uh, Goku... Has like a new Super Saiyan form. It looks like a uh, Vegeta goes Super Saiyan God. Mm. Um, but I thought and, uh, Vegeta already went Super Saiyan. But like, let's no, not had, get into it. Off screen, <laughs> off screen. Oh, okay. Uh, but no, he, it was he, never. It was never shown in the anime if he actually had the original God form. He just skipped straight to blue. He yeah, got it in the but manga, in, but it was never canon in the anime. But in he, but it's finally canon in the anime now, because you see it in the fucking trailer. And he's actually slimmer, like the god form should be. So we got super slim Vegeta with the red hair. Mm. Mm. Red hair and everything, and it looks amazing. You're going to have to stop me, because I could be here all day talking about this. Yeah, uh, but yeah, like, but as you know, we're hyped. We're hyped as fuck. And uh, I don't need to see more. I think no, I'm, I don't. I don't need another trailer. I'm sold. Like January, get the fuck over here. Yeah. All right. And with that, we have one more piece of news, and this is news that dropped uh, last night, and I didn't know about it till like an hour ago. But it's surprisingly big news, especially for specifically me and Spencer. Um, mm-hmm. It's really big news after fucking several years of waiting. We finally. Finally, have a release date for Ava 4.0. Wait, finally, oh, yeah, wait, yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw wait, this. Wait, wait, what? Yeah, it, they confirmed it is fine. It is coming out in 2020. You know what? Like, officially, officially, and apparently, and apparently, they fucking showed. There's a teaser for it too. It's playing like, it's in Japanese theaters. That has not been officially released in on on like YouTube online. Because apparently they, they it was like a teaser at like a con, um, but they will officially release it soon. A teaser for the new Evangelion film, Shin Evangelion Gekko ba- uh, Gekko Jiban, or in English is four point, uh, Evangelion three point oh plus one point oh. Yep. Uh, debuted on Friday, and it revealed that the film will open in Japanese theaters in twenty twenty. The teaser debuted it did prior to screenings of the new Hosoda film, which opened on Friday. Oh, okay. Uh, so apparently this is a this was a close kept secret. This was a Surprise teaser. Kara, the studio behind directors Hideki Anno's new Evangelion films, confirmed in 27, back all the way in April 2017, that Evan 4.0 was still in production. Um, the official website also revealed in April that April 2017 that the studio was including animators, modelers, technical staff, system engineers, and production managers. Um, they showed an image board for it back in July of uh, July 2017. Um, there is a you know, the uh, there is a uh, the, the the title was also announced all the way about this movie for a long time. Um, the the Japanese title has a uh, sim, music symbol at the end of it, denoted uh, denote re- used in music to denote repetition after using the end of measure. Take that mm-hmm. uh, fucking uh, take that fucking uh, uh, speculation as you were as you want. Uh, so, uh, the first three films, Ava 1.0 was released in, 27, in 2007, uh, Ava 2.0 was in 2009, and Ava 3.0 was in 2012. So, it hit, so by the time 4.0 comes out, eight it would years. be eight years since the last Ava film, which means that it have been eight years we have been since the, uh, the cliffhanger ending of 3.0. So, mm-hmm. Spencer, uh, you and I are both massive Ava fans. 
How yes. are you excited for this news? With the coming of finally Ava 4.0, I can cross that off my list of jokes that I can make. Because <laughs> yeah, knock that off your anime bingo. Because this anime would never bingo. come out. You thought this would never come out. You thought I this thought would... it was a fever dream. <laughs> I thought that I was like, I got sick one day and my cells were at work. And uh, I thought this would never come out. Holy shit! This is this is real, Matthew. I don't. Yeah, we're gonna have to wait it. a bit. We're gonna have to wait a bit. It's, yeah, it's still Here. still two years out, and every time an Ava film gets announced for date, it always gets delayed. Mm-hmm. So so expect it to come out in 2022. Expect expect it to cut. So right now though, it's, it's 2020 is the so expect it. But here's the thing: it has a release date, which means it more than likely will actually come out. So it's actually happening. Now yeah. we can make now we can make all the jokes about the Madoka Magica film uh, because that's where the exactly fuck what I was going to say. That's exactly what I was going to say is when when's the new Madoka Magica? Now we because just need news on that, and w- until we get that, this will forever be the meme. You cannot do this to me. The, the ending of the third movie kicks you in the balls, and then they, they just went, "Yeah, nah." Eh. I mean, yeah. I mean, see I mean, you third, next time. I mean, honestly, the third movie could have been. I, I would have been fine with that as the ending, to be completely honest. But like, I I would have been uh, at least. But like, because it felt. Uh, but at the same time, they, they it was like a couple weeks, two years later they announced, oh yeah, we're working on more Madoka Magica. But apparently, like the apparently, you want to know why they haven't been working on it? Uro Bucci was like, nah, I want to do this Godzilla stuff first. God, so damn we're not it. gonna I mean, see that till like. 2046. I'm dead. I'm fucking dead. I'm, fucking- I'm dead. I'm fucking dead. And then on my deathbed, I'm going to get a fucking notification from one of you dickheads. On Cyber like, Twitter. On Cyber Twitch, Twitter.org. And it's just going to be like, yo, new Adoka Magica movie's coming yo, out. Adoka's and then I'm going to die. And then Spencer's going to get an anti- and this. And Spence is going to get a heart attack because of that and then die. No, it's so, going to be yeah. like this. He's going to be on his deathbed. He's going to get a notification on his uh, implanted Google Glass in his brain. It's going to be one <laughs> It's going to be one of us being like, "Hey dude, I heard uh Madoka's finally coming." And then all you're going to hear is just the monotone like he's dead. <laughs> <laughs> like his heart his heart rate is just going to fucking plummet and then just you just hear the I can't back wait till we're like wow, seventy five yeah. years old and Madoka Magica comes out and we're still watching anime like fucking leaves. <laughs> because you know that's it. gonna happen. Oh yeah. I Once an anime fan, sit, always an anime fan. I can't wait to sit down with my like great grandchildren and then just be like, listen here, fucker. <laughs> you're watching this fucking show and you're gonna cry. Listen here, you fucking brats, you think you're innocent Dude, now, listen, I'm about to ruin listen. it for you. This is a sh- when this I'm is- fucking guys, when I'm 80 years old, I'll fucking I'll be sitting next to my 2D wife, and I'll be like, "Listen here, kiddos. <laughs> Listen so, here. I'm gonna. This be- is how I met your mother. <laughs> Josh is gonna be sitting next to his mail order Japanese bride. <laughs> yep. In his oh rocking God, chair, I'm and still- be like, "Listen I- here, kiddos. I can tell you about when Etchy was good." <laughs> and she's still talk. good and, and she's still good grandpa that's right kiddo that's right. I don't know why but I always assume that like my old man voice is just going to be me but just permanently pissed off so it's just like what are we going to do grandpa well you listen here fuckers <laughs> listen here you're going to sit fuckers. down you're going to watch here, Full Metal fucker. Alchemist Brotherhood and you're going to fucking like it you're going to watch Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood and then you're going to watch the new series Full Metal Alchemist Sisterhood and you're going to fucking enjoy it there's going to be a, a, a fucking watch Full Metal Alchemist Fatherhood <laughs> fucking there's going to be like 10 parenthood like fucking, uh, there's gonna be so much like full of alchemists, like fucking shows. They're just gonna this. keep rebooting it with like a different character. You know, <laughs> full full metal alchemist. Gender Ben Hood is the no, one with Mr. Hood. Gender Ben Elric twins. Let's go. Mm-hmm. Gender Wait, ben no, and no, Winry no, is a dude no, with a no, massive no, penis. Winry is a dude <laughs> who is voiced by Tim Allen. <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck it, home improvement. Home improvement. Who? <laughs> It's like uh, she's uh, she's all she's ever gonna wear is a denim jacket and have a tool belt, and that's that's oh, that's, that's her that's character. Her that's her character. She has no characterization, no love plot. Cool she's just Tim cool Allen. Other than it's Tim Allen. Cool <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. 
<laughs> fuck. Okay, we're moving on. We're fucking moving on. Okay. Fucking, um, but yeah, Ava 4.0. Meanwhile, Stalking Season 2 finally got announced 80 years later. Will never happen. That is, that is that. No, but, uh, <laughs> 4.0 is actually happening, so, uh... Holy fuck! Uh, so... And with that, Holy let's move on to the anime sales chart and talk, see, like... Oh, right, I forgot about that. Anime sales chart. Um, not much has changed uh, over the past couple of weeks, but there has been some big, uh, big uh, change. There's, uh, there's the biggest, big winner of the week was that the final, uh, the final, uh, like, the final uh, film in the, uh, like, the current Gundam, the origin series came out on Blu-ray and had one of the biggest... Uh, oh, like uh, first, uh, like first week sale openings of the uh, of the season of like the year so far, with thirty thousand copies in the first week alone. Not bad. Uh, not wait, bad at all. 30, wait, wait, wait. What th- what sold thirty thousand? Uh, thirty thousand Gundam. Damn Gundam. Remember, it's Gundam. So Gundam sells hotcakes in Japan. Japan. The that rest of the, the rest, the rest no, the rest of the list are mostly like other uh. uh uh, the Vesta list are mostly other like uh, installment, like other inst- like stuff, uh, like previous week installments, like who've been there. Where's Eurocamp and all this? Um, Eurocamp, Eurocamp is not on the list anymore. Uh, oh, oh. Did Fle- place first was not there. And Josh Chan is sad. Um, uh, Love Live is still number two. Uh, fucking oh. of course it is. You uh, can't beat me. I cannot uh, be defeated. Uh, but also for Spencer, this is also so Spencer gets one win, but he also gets a loss because a Hakata continues to bomb. <laughs> so uh, you know what? Fine then. Hakata is basically a Bakano, so it's just gonna be like fucking bombing in Japan. But you know what? I don't care. I enjoyed it. Fuck we actually, me, Matt and I were discussing. Trash. Matt and I, I were, will. Matt and I were discussing. <laughs> Matt and I were discussing, like, the year-end awards that we're gonna do, and he came to me and he's like, watch Spencer pick fucking Hakata for anime of the year. <laughs> I mean, I'm probably yeah, gonna Okay, pick one second. I'm gonna talk directly to the country of Japan. Listen here, you fucking foreign fox. Listen here, oh. the entirety of the Japanese populace who is definitely watching this podcast. <laughs> if you're watching this podcast, and you're from the great country of Japan... One, know that I respect your people, your culture, and your history. However, you fuckers need to get a goddamn mind when it comes to fucking brilliant Americanized ch- This was even in Japan, for God's sakes. Spencer. Why the fuck do you like Dorara Ross so much when you can't like something that's better, aka Bakudo, or Bakana, or 91 Days, or anything of that sort? Fuck you. Fuck you, you foreign fucks. They like idols, that just like, like Korean people in it. That might not be why they don't like it. Well, it looks like we're never going to be sponsored by guy. Japan ever. Fucking Spencer. Spencer, the Spencer went on a massive rant. Moving on. That. Yeah, moving but I'm uh, moving on. Moving on. Uh, Violet Evergarden is actually hanging in there. Uh, it's cool. doing pretty That's well, good. actually. Uh, uh, so is P5. P5 is not on the list now. P5, P5 in the first three weeks has sold almost 8,000. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you know, that's impressive. That's pretty yeah. decent. Yeah. Um, uh, Legend of the Galactic Heroes is doing uh, all right. Um, it's doing all right. Um, yeah. It's not doing nearly as well as the original series did. It's definitely uh, it's underperforming. Mm, um, yeah. But I don't think it's no, not surprised though, considering that the original series is such a classic. Yeah, that, that's Ooh, true. It's in the top, it's in the top ten on the anime list, dude. I would argue, and it's like yeah, I would argue higher than that. I, I think it's higher than that. Um, I don't know, but uh, I think uh, it actually might be in top five. I yeah, I think check it's top it five. I think it's top five, but like it's it's one of those. Um, but it's doing pretty. But it's doing decently enough. It is. It's holding. It it has really good holds. Like, well, concerning that, most. Most of the top ten in the anime list is Gintama. <laughs> Fuck yeah, true. Gintama. No, but it's doing really, it's doing really well when it comes to the hold, uh, hold wise. Um, nice. Uh, hold wise. Um, it's uh, 
Um, now next, you know, uh, the next week is going to be a big de- uh, for next week for the sales chart is going to be big because My Hero Season Three is going to have its first uh, Blu-ray release, which means it's going to be top Ooh. of the fucking charts, right? Yeah. I don't fucking... know because I don't know because my heroes all over the place. Um, first season did a lot better than the second season did in terms of praise. Second Japan season Japan is of... ass backwards. The, exactly. the, but the, but the reason why is because the reason why is because the Blu-ray. Here's the thing about anime Blu-rays: anime Blu-rays in Japan are not marketed towards a general public. It's do not. The mark. You know who they're marketed towards? They're marketed Weeps. towards otaku. Otaku. And, and in my in Japan, My Hero is a show that airs on like the same time is like in a cho- in like a kid's time slot, and that's why it does so well in Japan in terms of ratings because a lot of ki- it's a very popular show among like the younger audience. I don't know about the older audience, but a lot of the older audience they don't buy it. That, that is, the kids don't buy it, so like that's the thing. So. Instead, okay. so if they're gonna buy anything, they're gonna buy stuff like Gundam or Love Live or shit like that. That's why that shit sells really well, because you know, fucking weebs. Spencer wins this round. I hey, it does I win, win but I also lose. Yeah, because yeah. you watch Love Live. That's why you lose. <laughs> All right, this and that's the anime sales chart <laughs> for the week for, for the past couple of weeks. And with that, let's move on to our featured anime of the podcast. Woohoo! I'm just, I'm uh, just ripping in the fencer. And, uh, and that is the uh, and that is the sports uh, action sports ecchi uh, 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 keijo, directed Hell by the, yeah. uh, hid, uh, directed by Hideya Takahashi and written by Ta- uh, Takio Kato from Studio Zebek. It aired for twelve episodes from October 6, twenty sixteen, to April December twenty second, twenty sixteen. And what if you want, if you if you would like to watch Keijo, you can watch it on Crunchyroll subbed and in Fun Funimation now dubbed. Links will be in the description for both versions. Ye, and it's actually a very good dub. It is a very good dub. Um, it is a very yeah. good dub. Um, but Funimation is known for very good dubs. Uh, but uh, Keijo fall, you know, Keijo, uh, takes it takes place in a kind of I want to say like alternate universe kind of where the yeah. biggest uh the where the biggest sport in the world. At least in Japan, is a is a sport is a woman only sport by the name of keijo. Keijo, no, keijo is a is is a, it is it is a sport involving where women use their butts and their boobs to kick the other opponent out of the ring, whether and however they essentially please. Basically, in Shonen Battle Glory, and it fall, follows our main character Nozomi, who. Which who whose main goal in life is she wants to be the best Keijo player in the world, and she and it follows her journey at the at a Keijo academy. So uh, let's go through the everyone uh, one by one here. Josh, yes. That's uh, what were your initial impressions of Keijo? <laughs> you watched it for the first time. Okay, I'm gonna have to remember what. <laughs> um. So, like I said, since I am the Etchy God, I think it was an excellent mix of uh, Etchy and Shonen. It did a great job blending the two without feeling either were overpronounced. Um, it had Studio Zebek did a fucking great job animating the characters, and each character, animation-wise, felt different from each other. Um, very memorable characters, too. And it was a, it was just a really great uh, etchy shonen anime that mm-hmm. is very underrated. Excellent, excellent, excellently said, Spencer. What were your initial impressions of Keijo after you first watched it? So I watched Keijo when it first came out originally, um, as well as I watched it when it. Uh, I Was watched it. it- yeah, when I watched it when it was airing, but I watched it in sub, not in dub, so I had never actually seen the dub for uh, Keijo before. And I must say, I am actually incredibly impressed with this anime. Um, however, this anime is not perfect by any means, and I have some massive problems with it. I think everybody um, does, but yeah. One of my massive problems, and the big problem I hear that will probably be agreed to uh, with by Shane and also probably by you, Matt, as well, is that a lot of characters don't need to be there. 
Very true. Uh, I'll give you explanations. Characters? I'll give you explanations for like why that that is, and it's it, it's, it's it, because the manga wasn't caught up. No, eh, uh, uh, I'll explain it in more. There's a lot of underlying yeah. issues with KJ. There is just in but, general. All right. But, in general, there's so, there, there's issues. However, I don't want to shit on it. I want to get that up now because I fucking loved it. I loved right. every second of it. Plus. Mm-hmm. All right, Sane, what did you think of Keijo? Okay, so coming from resident super shonen boy, when I heard you guys talking about Keijo and how it was basically a crazy shonen battle anime where girls fight each other with their tits and ass, I was like, all right, that sounds cool, I guess. (laughs) And then I actually watched it. Going in, I expected it to be nothing but just fan service action. I thought it was going to be completely shallow, nothing to it. And then actually watching it, I was surprised to see that there was actually a surprising amount of character and heart put into the show, and that there were quite a few characters that had a surprising amount of development and depth to them. So, going in, expe- going in expecting basically nothing but popcorn fun, and coming out being like, yeah, okay, there, were, there was actually quite a lot to that show, much more than I anticipated. Keijo really surprised me, not only because of the premise, and it's a very big set of premises, if you know what I'm saying, but <laughs> just coming out and seeing exactly what they did with it, I was really surprised, and I really enjoyed it for what it was. You know what, though? I also feel like this uh, can be a K- fun anime. Keijo is, I've always said, Keijo is the best bad anime ever made. Um, Keijo is... Keijo has no right to be as good as it actually is. No, nope. the- no, 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 no. <laughs> and the fact that and the fact that it is as good as it is is all the more impressive. One of the best things, yeah. ab- and by far, I think one of the best things about Keijo is the fact that despite this ludicrous, stupid premise, like silly premise, it takes itself completely straight. Yep. There is no, there is no sense, and there's never a sense in the show that it's like half assing it. And there's never a sense oh, in the show that like they're just doing it because it's like, funny, because boobs and ass. Like, no, they take this shit 100% seriously. They go 100% on this shit, man. Yep. Yeah. And the like, characters take it seriously, which means that the audience takes it seriously. So like, when shit goes down in a fight, you're not it, it's not it's it's a mix of funny because oh they're fighting with their tits and ass, but it's also genuinely like I wanna know who the fuck wins. Like this is a yeah. legit sport full of legit competitors who this is their dream in life, and they put one hundred and ten percent effort into it. Yeah. So, uh now that we get our initial presses out of the way, uh Spencer, what was your favorite episode of Keijo? My favorite episode of Keijo is episode 10, the second East-West War race, I think it's called. Yes, hey. good job. Fuck yeah. Um, that is the episode, the, the second race, with which has my favorite character, Alba, in it. And it's just, it really shows out the absolute insanity of Keijo. Because, uh, like, they're fighting on planes, for Christ's sakes. They're fighting on the wings of planes. It's ridiculous. It's insane. And mostly it's bullshit. Alba should have won, but she lost because of a stupid fucking technicality. I don't disagree there. The gates of Utilion. The gates of Butilion. You still pronounce it wrong. It's gates of Butilion. 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 It's just a wall of ass. It's just a wall of ass for some reason. But yeah, uh, episode 10 really encompasses what Keijo is all about, and it's just a really good episode all around. And I say you should watch it. (laughs) But uh, 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 Josh, what's your favorite episode of Keijo? Episode 12. The, the heated battles rear end. Yep, it's a great way to end the series. You have the final battle between Maya and um, Nozomi. You get Nozomi's wonderful upgrade, which is a fucking scarf. The fucking stupid. Ah. 
puts a scarf on, she all of a sudden becomes fucking <laughs> Jesus. She gets poked in the back with nipples, and then she gets this super shonen transformation where her swimsuit's a little different, and her bow becomes a scarf. And all of a sudden, yep. she's like Keijo Jesus. Yep. It was a great end, and then we got the sweet ending of seeing uh, the two schools, you know, all the girls being friendly towards each other. It yeah. Was nice. It was a nice, sweet episode. Yeah. Yeah, uh, that was a good. E- that's a good episode, Shane. What's your favorite episode? My favorite episode is episode five, full auto Cerberus, because much like I've told these guys before, Cerberus might be my favorite fucking thing in this show. Like, if you need any prime example of the insanity that is Keijo, fucking butt Cerberus is a, a, a like butt, a butt that chases you. Like, and just butt Cerberus you. is like prime example of how stupid this fucking show is. And it's yeah. amazing. And it's just the fight between Nozomi and Fujisaki with Cerberus was great. Auto butt, uh, vacuum butt cannon versus Cerberus. It, it's just stupid insanity, and I loved it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, my favorite, if you know me and when it comes to Shonen, my favorite episode, some of my favorite episodes of Shonen are not the fighting episodes, it's the training episodes. I love training episodes in Shonen. So obviously my favorite episode of Keijo is episode 7, Where the Turnips Lead. Uh, I love, I love, love, love this episode because one of the things that I, th- like, it goes back to what I was saying about Keijo is that it takes itself, like, super seriously and plays everything completely straight. This is easily the best example of that. Cause in this episode, we, we, we learn how we, I uh, can um, no, Zobi needs to train herself in order to fight better in Keijo. Cause her using the vacuum butt cannon a lot has actually as legit as, you know, legitimately fucked with her, uh, yes. legitimately fucked well, with her muscle, that. muscle mass. Yeah. Her ass has gotten so f- muscly that it's slowed down yeah so she needs to train she needs to train it and that sounds like a here's the thing when you say that you're like okay it's good it, what is it gonna be the one of the things i love about it is that the tr- is that the training that she goes through makes f- complete fucking sense the only thing mm-hmm. in the show that does like it's yeah. actually like when you watch it, you're like, this is actually like a legitimately good fucking training exercise. What the fuck? It's physics. Yeah, it's, it's using simple physics, dude. It's just yeah. using momentum. It's using momentum, and I like. And one of the things the training episodes in and like Shonen always give more insight into characters, like how they work, is like how not only just their fighting style, but their personalities and their ideals and all that stuff. And we really learn a lot about Nozomi in this episode. Mm-hmm. Uh, we learn, and we, uh, no, and it, it there's, a, there's a lot of really good stuff in the episode. And I, I just, that episode was the episode that like really, tur- like that was the episode I watched a kid. I'm like, yeah, this is fucking great. Like that was the episode that really like sold me on it. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. All right, so you all have different epi- favorite. I don't know if that's happened before, actually. I think it's we happened maybe different- once or twice, but it's not very I often. Think it, yeah, maybe, it's maybe a very yeah. rare occurrence. Um, next up, but here's going to be one that's going to be a, a big old war. Um, favorite character in Keijo. Um, this is going to be basically a best girl match, I know, just right now. So yeah. Let's start with Josh. Gra- there's going yeah, to be some... This is going to be some ground rules. Um, no... Uh, the ground rules is is that your waifu from this show is trash, and so therefore, once you once you realize that they're all tra- once you realize all of them are trash, including your own, it's good. All right, Josh, who's your really, favorite? Character? We need to get this going, so I'm going to be quick with this. It's known. It's known. Yes, she's adorable. She's a cinnamon bun. She's stacked. She's great. Yeah, for context, Josh has to leave in like five minutes. So, ooh, oh shit. Okay, okay. let's get this. Over. Ex- All right, let's get this over with yeah, quickly. Known. Then. Known's adorable. Known's adorable. All right, Shane. Um, my favorite character, and I think Spencer agrees with me, is uh, Alba, 
girl Alba with the ponytail, she's fucking adorable, she's kind-hearted, she's insecure about herself, but she grows as a person over the course of the show, and she's got a fucking ridiculous, stupid power, where she touches people's butts and then steals their butt powers, and she can use them against people. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's uh, it's so fucking stupid. (laughs) But I love her. She literally gropes people and fucking... And fucking gets their abilities. And much like Nozomi says, she's fucking stacked. Yeah, he is. She fun. is. You know, I will say this now. Alba is a very, very close second for me. Yeah, Alba's a girl. close second. Yeah, it's like I thought. Of, I've thought about mine for a while. Initially, I was gonna go Sayaka because I love Sayaka's uh, overall person, just personality in the show. Mm. But I'm gonna agree with Spencer and Shane on this. It's <laughs> Alba. Because yeah. I think Alba get, goes through the best arc of the show. Yeah, she the does. Alba squad. <laughs> yeah, so she she goes through the best arc of the show and easily has the most development out of the main four. Alba uh, is a fucking chicky booty, and she deserves to be protected from everything. I love her. You love her. All right. I would hug her. Hey, I, I would hug her, too, because of those uh, donkadonks. Um, <laughs> those bazongas. Uh, the bazongas. Um... To so with every favorite that comes a least favorite. Uh, Spencer, who's your least favorite character from the show? I finally looked up the name of the character, Yuko Oshima, because this anime has a problem where instead of having a lot of great characters to pick from, it has a lot of characters that just didn't need to exist. I didn't know her name. I can look it up. Yuko Oshima is the muscular, tall girl who. Oh, her. Yes, yes. That isn't in the elite class because there's another girl who basically takes her place and it's just a better version of her. And you could remove Yuko from the story and nothing would change. Nope. Whatsoever. She's a useless character. And that's why she's my least favorite. All right, Shane, who's your least favorite character? Um, again, I had to look up her name. Um, you might know her as the girl from the first East-West war race who got knocked off immediately by the twins. Her name is Mari Murata. And oh, her! Yeah, she's my pick, too. Fuck her. Yeah, she's, <laughs> she literally shows up for five seconds, gets knocked off, and then she's gone forever. Like, by the way, I looked up her ability, Mirror Butt. What, what a fucking dope ability that's wasted. That's wasted on a non-character, basically. Mirror Butt. Like the, mirror like, Butt. The- from it's what I understand, and this gets into what we're going to be talking about in criticisms, apparently she had a lot more to do in the manga. So, like, that's the... Uh, but, um, but yeah, she's my pick as well because she was she's a great char- she's a great idea of a character who's wasted. Um, Josh, who's your, fav- who's your least favorite character? A teacher from the Eastern school. She's a cunt. <laughs> that's also a good choice because she is a cunt. She's a fucking cunt. I love Josh. That's all I have to say. From the Eastern School because she is a cun. And I think before yep. I think before we uh, move on, because Josh has to leave, so let's get Josh's final verdict real quick before we continue. Yeah, let's get Josh's final okay. verdict so that way we can. Okay, so few quick nitpicks. There are useless characters that really don't need to be there, and there's just a lot of things that can be left unexplained. But you know what? It's still a great anime. Nine out of ten. Nine out of ten. All the right. The Etchy God gives it a nine out of ten. Yep. Good old that, nine. With that, I take my leave. Thank you for being part of this, son. Thank you for being I'll part be of this. I'll be back in a little bit. All right. All right. Now let's continue the discussion, shall we? Now let us continue this. Um, we're going to go we're gonna talk about anything. Uh, I want to talk about some other things that I really liked about the show. Mainly uh, the animation. Animation. The is really good. This is a really well animated show. And especially, especially considering the. Uh, especially considering that th- they did not need to put as much quality into the no, animation. No, they did not. This could have been like B level at best. Mm-hmm. But they. They work their ass off. They, I, they... Ha! Yeah. I don't under, I still don't understand to this day, and this show's been out for almost two years. I've seen it t- twice now. How the boob and butt battle show got such a high fucking animation budget. I don't get it. 
Probably because they re because people like boobs and, and boots and that is like true. Boots. You're um, right. <laughs> uh, Spencer, anything else on the show that you really like and haven't brought up yet? Um, animation's great. Actually, yeah. Uh, this is one of those rare things where every attack has like I'm gonna use the pun. It has a weight to it. Like, oh yeah, it does. Like like none of the attacks feel flimsy or weak. They that they feel like you're getting hit in the head with an ass. It's, <laughs> I also want to pay special uh, merit to the sound effects and the sounding itself. This is good sound design one in of this my, show. One of my favorite sound effects in the entire show was whenever Sayaka used W acceleration and it mm. went. <laughs> It's, it's like that sound effect is now drilled into my brain. It's like something that brings me joy. Now she sounds like a fucking engine, and it's she great. Does. She, she gives herself a wedgie, and then can teleport. Like fuck. Yep. She can instant transmission, but basically, uh, yeah. Yeah, I, 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 I enjoy it for what it was. Oh and my I, god! I just thought of something amazing. <laughs> What? What? Okay. If there was Go a character it. in this show that could actually use instant transmission, and she, instead of putting her fingers on her forehead, she puts them on her butt. That. Uh, d mm, <sighs> Fucking. This I'm show trademarking loves butt. that. <laughs> this show loves butt. There's also a gen. Uh, also, for those people who prefer boobs over butts, there's a genuine uh, butt bias in this show. There is a time. butt bias, but there are quite a few pair of uh, jumbly jams. Yeah. Jumbly bumblies that uh, have good abilities, like uh, sure you cans. Sure you cans. Damn it! Yeah, uh, the what was it? The attack? What was the attack on Titan one? Oh, attack on hip. Yeah, attack on hip. Attack on Titan. Attack on Titan. Uh, that was like fucking stupid, That's and I so loved dumb. it. All right, uh, Shane. Anything else you really like and want to mention that we haven't talked about yet? Um, like I mentioned before, I was surprised at just how much heart there is in the show. Th this show, as stupid as it is, is like the embodiment of the shonen spirit, which I fucking love. Because you guys know me, super shonen boy. Anything that really, anything that really delves into that that shonen spirit of wanting, blood boil. wanting to grow and get stronger, yeah, it pumps you up, and I fucking love that. Um, other than that. Like we said, the art and animation is top tier for this kind of show. The soundtrack to this show is really good, too. Soundtrack is great. Uh, OP is fucking banging. Yeah, OP is banging. ED is really good, too. Um, ED is really good. The soundtrack in particular, though, I want to mention, because it sounds like a classic Shonen soundtrack, and it's yeah. great. Uh, so the tracks, are, so the show has a badass fucking soundtrack. Mm -hmm. um, um, but I think there is, like we mentioned earlier, there is... A couple of issues with uh, Keijo that we want to get into. So, Shane, what issue? What is there any issues you have with Keijo in particular? Biggest issue I have, which everyone here will agree, including Josh, who just left, but he agrees. Mm -hmm. um, too many useless characters. Like, mm -hmm. there's an over, there's an absurdly large cast, which I understand being a sports show, but mm -hmm. they never fully utilized like half of them. It's like mm -hmm. there's. I'm going to ask you, a, a, and just to prove this, I'm going to ask you a very easy question. Okay, shoot. That leads into the thing. Okay, can both of you, can you name the three type of Keijo players? In like, fighters, out fighters, counters. Can you name a counter fighter? Uh, non, non and it, uh, Alba. Okay. Alba's an out fighter. Alba's not a counter fighter, she's an out fighter. Non is also an outfighter, not a counter. No, she's not. No, she's, yes, she's she is. a counter. Non's a counter. You're wrong on that, boy. I need to look. Okay. And also, Alba is also a counter, by the way. No, too. no. She is a classified outfighter. Yeah, that's That I true. know for a fact. She's classified outfighter. You can look it up. I already did. <laughs> but aside from all this, I want you to... I'm going to name a character, and I want you to name... What they did. Ready? Okay. What did they do? Outfighter. Okay, so Alba's a weird one. She just starts out a counter and then becomes Outfighter, Outfighter. later on in the manga. 
Okay. Not okay. cover that in the anime. They just so, call her an outfighter right off the bat in the anime. Yeah. So that's anime fucking different. retarded. Okay. Okay, ready? Ready. The character is Saya Kogatana. Mm-hmm. Um Oh yeah, I know her. I remember oh, her. Yeah. She's Nibble yes. Katana Lady. Exactly. She's Nibble Katana Lady. If you you, but you knew her as Nipple Katana Lady, not as her actual name. Nope. <laughs> and yeah. there's, therein lies the problem, is that there's characters that are there, but nobody fucking cares about them, because they're literally worthless. Like like I was saying, there's just, there's too many characters and not enough focus on them. And there, a, lot of, a lot of this comes along with how they adapted Keijo as an anime. Yeah, uh, this is this is a huge thing that Matt uh, told me about that's like a big negative for him. And it's something to me that I feel like outside of this, Zuya Zebek did a fantastic job adapting the manga. But! Here's the, uh, the no pun intended there. Here's the big um, but. Uh, here's, here's the but. Um... Keijo has, like, fucking six volumes of worth of material that it just skips in the beginning. Because in the anime, it starts off with them going to the Keijo training school. Mm-hmm. Before that, there's, like, a fucking, like, large chunk of the manga, which is about them trying to get into the school. Holy and about sh- them training they- to become- yeah. They completely skipped over training camp and the entrance exams. They yeah, do. in they... um, in the mm-hmm. anime, the only the only thing they show before they get to the training school they is the flashback the... in the first episode. They show a bit, but that's all they show. Apparently, it was due. Apparently, it's due to because they want. Apparently, they wanted to get to like the fucking big stuff quicker. But I feel that it was a mistake. Because it left out a lot of really good deposit of like development for our main cast. Because you know, because of that, we have a cast which had uh, unfortunately, and because that Beth falls into my main, my biggest gripe, and I've told Shane about this. As much as I love Luzomi, she is wildly underdeveloped compared to the rest of the main cast. Yeah, yep. yeah, I can agree. And that's because they cut it all out. <laughs> Because it's all in the entrance exams and all of that stuff. But they cut it, so instead you have a character who pretty much does not change throughout the entirety of the uh, anime, with the exception of Episode Mm 7. So you kind of have like a... You have a main protagonist who's kind of like a blank slate, while Sayaka, Non, and Aoba get the blunt of the development. And... And it's a big... It's an issue, and... Even then, Keijo even like a lot of the, a lot in the manga. The fights were a lot longer. They went into more depth with a lot of the different characters beforehand. I, w- I will agree that in the anime, a lot of the fights feel a little rushed. They're definitely truncated versions of the manga versions. Yeah. I feel like like Studio Sevic, not to their fault, tried to fit one fight per episode. They did, yeah. That basically that's what they tried to do, and the fights in the manga went on sometimes for like six or seven chapters. Like that's yeah. they went on a bit. So now, I had never read the manga. What happened to it? Um, it what happened was the manga never really did well in Japan. So no. the anime was made as an in, a, in a, an attempt to try to uh, to lure people in, so to speak, to, to lure people in. Well, Keijo didn't do well. The anime didn't do well either in Japan. Um. So the anime, the manga was eventually uh, canned. It was canceled yeah. after 18 volumes. Basically, after the anime happened, there's still a large chunk of time afterwards because it shows a lot of of their uh, actual, like professional careers. Um, and it showed like that there was like a that like there was like a rift between Nozomi and Sayaka that developed uh, because of their. No, because of they they all they both went off to different uh, areas of the uh, of the league, so they were both on different sides. So they had to fight each other several times, and it was kind of a rift forming. There's a lot of interesting. I there was a lot of interesting. Like the fights got more intense, uh, and now because now they weren't fighting just for greed and stuff. They were fighting for money and their livelihood. So suddenly, a lot more was at stake. So like, if someone lost a fight, you felt that you're like, oh shit. And that sounds not, way more interesting than what we actually got. 
Yeah, unfortunately, that was they saved that for a possible season two, which will never happen. Will never happen. Of, yeah, and this is what I think it should have done. Keijo should have been two core. Yeah, it, it should have been, been double core. Episode. It should not have been twelve. It should have been. It should have been double length in order to explore more stuff with the actual like past the school. Or maybe even give more time developed to developing Nozomi before she gets into the school. Yeah. Yeah. But in that, I think that's pretty much all I have to say about that. So. Yeah, my my biggest gripe, and I think Spencer's is too, is just how many characters there are that don't need to be there. It's mm-hmm. just kind of, it's kind of ridiculous. Mm-hmm. So, uh, but uh, I think they're pretty much done. Uh, now time for final verdicts. Oh, we're going to start with Spencer. Spencer, what's your final score for Keijo? After thinking about it, I'm going to go back and renege on my uh, original comments mm-hmm. that I made. Yeah. Um, Keijo gets a 7 out of 10. Wow. Okay. Wow, it went down. I just, I love it. And it actually pains me to say to give it that score, but there's so much. If if okay, if you look at it as an actual anime and not as you know an etchy sports stuff, it, do, it just it doesn't work. There are so many parts that could make this a nine for me or a ten or even you know something along those lines. But for every one step forward, I find three problems with it. And I can't, in good conscience, give it a super high score just because it was dumb turn your brain off TV. So I have to give it a seven. All right. All right. So the, what a, a twi- a, 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 what's a twist? It's a twist of events. Uh, I did not expect that. Uh, Shane, what do you give uh, Keijo? You know, okay. <laughs> Even talking about it here, discussing it on the the show, there is a lot that really holds it back that should lower more sc- my score. But fuck it, nine out of ten. <laughs> fuck it, nice. I don't. I don't even care. It has a lot of problems. It skips out on a lot of really crucial details. It should have been double the length. There's a lot of useless, wasted characters. Blah, 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 blah. I don't really care about all that. Sure, there are problems, but I feel like this show is something special enough that, to me, it doesn't bother me enough to bring my score down. Like, to me, the fact that, like I said before, the action does this show wonders. Like, if it wasn't a crazy battle shonen the way it is, I feel like I wouldn't have been nearly as interested in it as I am. But the fact that it is, and the fact that it goes that much further to be as over the top as it is, and the fact that it embodies the shonen spirit that I love so much, I had too much fun with it to really care about the the nitpicks and the things that hold it back. So fuck it, I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10. I really enjoyed it for what it was, even though I can admit that it has a lot of underlying issues. But it didn't really affect it for me. Yeah, uh, for me, I'm somewhere in the middle between you two. I'm going to give it an 8. Because I feel that the stuff that's good in it is really, really good. And, uh, um, it, it, like, it's really, really good. And to me, I feel that it's probably one of the strongest, uh, like, just pure, like, in terms of just, like, just, like, popcorn shows, it's one of the strongest anime out there for it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Again, I can't give it anything higher than an 8 because it has a lot of problem. It has a lot of problems with it that honestly, it honestly first here's the thing, first watching it the problems aren't apparent. They're all it's the worst kind of problems. They're problems that appear on rewatches and when you think about them. Mhm. Yep. The, those that's the worst kind because then it sours future experiences a little bit. Cuz now you know that okay, there's some act like cuz then you're like wait a minute. <laughs> But um, overall, I have to give it an eight because it's it's uh, the stuff that it does well. It does way too well to not to to ignore them, to not ignore them. Anyways, 
Uh, and I'm pretty sure that, that's it. I think yeah, we're pretty much I think we're ready to wrap talk. up. We're ready to wrap up. But before that, time to announce what the next anime, uh, featured anime of the week shall oh, be. Oh boy, it's going to be a juicy one. Uh, it's going to be a juicy one. If, you, if you're new to the podcast and you don't know how this works, uh, uh, every every podcast we rotate between having an anime picked by either me or Shane. Uh, and we rotate that as well. And then we also rotate between the random anime generator. Keijo we got on the random anime generator, so that means it is a anime picked by one of us, and it's in this week, and next time it's in this time, it's yours truly. So I picked an anime. Uh, I So I decided I'm going to pick something that I really want to talk. I was like, what do I really want to talk about? And of course, there's one anime that I really want to talk about, and I feel that really needs to be talked about. For better or worse. For better and for worse, it need, this is one that needs to be talked about. And it's one that I would, we were going to cover it. I think we were going to cover it regardless. Yeah, but regardless of how it ended up. Yeah, but we definitely need to talk about it now. And with that, I'm proud to announce that the next featured anime of the podcast is going to be the highly, no, the highly divisive, well, also highly, uh, highly popular, the incredibly popular uh, Studio Trigger A1 Pictures collab, Darling in the Franks. It's going to be a bloodbath uh, next episode, it's going, dude. This is going to be a fun one. I am very, very excited for this There's going to be some hot takes. There's going to be a takes. lot of hot takes. And in this oh, one. man, it makes it easy for me because I know exactly what I want to talk about. So fuck rewatching this shit. Yeah, I'm gonna uh, watch well, like two episodes of it dubbed because I haven't seen the dub. And then oh yeah, I haven't seen the dub. I uh, I have seen a bit of it. It's actually it's a pretty good dub. It's pretty good. It's a pretty good. So you know. Um, but yeah, Darling the Franks is up next. Uh, so if you have, if all of you have not seen Darling the Franks, please make sure. Actually, please make sure to watch it before you uh you ha- uh you watch we uh we go uh, before you watch our podcast on it because, because- we. Oh, I was going to say, because spoiler I'm talk, going we'll probably be going spoiler. To, This is going to be the most spoiler-heavy fucking oh, yeah. uh, thing we've ever... We'll have this a, show so. just ended, like, three weeks ago, so... Yeah. Heavy spoilers. <laughs> heavy spoilers. I'm going to spoil the fucking shit out of this show. I mean, yes. the show spoiled itself rotten anyway, so... <laughs> Alright, but uh, we're going to... That's all we have to say about that. That's all we're going to say about that. And with that, I think we're pretty much done here. My name is yeah. Matt... A.K. Legion Rex. I am your host. You can find me at www.youtube.com slash Legion Rex, but I don't upload. Where he does uh, not upload can, ever. <laughs> where it does not upload ever, and I want to, but I never have time. And uh, But you can also find me on Twitter, uh, at Legion Rex, where I do post. Where he is much more active. I am much more active on Twitter. Um, uh, with me, I have my co-host, Shane, a.k.a. The Bearded One. You can find him at www.youtube.com dot com slash the beard gaming network where you can find uh our felt our other podcast bearded banter along with other things like let's plays unboxings and all that sort of good gaming goodness uh you can also find him on twitter where he'll post about dragon ball where i will post about f- usually anime <laughs> yeah usually anime um and with also with us we have spencer our guest spencer who is also on twitter you can follow him on twitter if you what? What's yes, your Twitter handle? Me, at Beery Burton. At him. At Beery Burton. At, at Beery Burton. I, uh, when I tweet, it's usually a banger. But when he tweets, it's usually directed towards some sort of anime voice actress who usually responds to him. Yeah. yeah Spencer. Spencer. Spencer's being followed by uh by uh, fa- uh was it you're being followed by Faku right? No J list. Oh, J list. Yeah, J list follows you. J list follows me. So if you want to be uh, looking at the tweets of somebody who's officially followed by J list, your <laughs> friends in Japan. If you we'll want, so- if you want someone with fucking connections, <laughs> you want someone with connections. Spencer is actually part of J list, and he won't tell us. He's so ashamed of it. I'm so ashamed to be on the payroll that I'm like, mm, I'm just gonna, I'm good. I actually run the social media account, and I follow myself. It's crazy. <laughs> no, if you, th- you think that you think that he's a uh, part of, uh, you think that he's a uh, works at Costco. No, he works at J List. No, he, work he officially works at J List. But Costco is like an undercover operation. It is. Why do you think I I push cards all day? <laughs> also, Josh was with us 
for a while yeah. before he left. God rest his soul. Any, yeah, Josh was with us. He does, he, I don't, he doesn't have shit. So, <laughs> uh, so with that, I think we're pretty much done here. Uh, I hope you enjoy the podcast, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Boy. Thank you for listening to The Gap. If you like what you've seen, you can subscribe to The Gap Podcast YouTube channel to get the latest podcasts as they go live. Be sure to like and comment and let us know what you guys think of the show. Thank you very much for tuning in, and we'll see you next week. Don't